So you're interested in learning about the top neighborhoods in Franklin, Tennessee. Well, in this video, we're going to talk all about neighborhoods in Franklin, and you're going to hear it through the eyes of two locals who spend a lot of time in Franklin. We're going to also give you some insights into why these neighborhoods made the list, what these neighborhoods look like, and what does it cost to live in the top neighborhoods in Franklin. And if you stay until the end, we have two bonus neighborhoods that we think a lot of people either miss or may not be aware of that we want to talk about. With that, let's get into it. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, I want to say thanks for stopping by. If you want to learn all about living in Middle Tennessee, Nashville, and surrounding areas, then tap subscribe to the channel and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about our market here in Nashville. My name is Clay with the Kelton Group. I've been a real estate agent here since 2004. And the team, Paul Tucker and I, we get contacted almost daily with questions about the middle Tennessee area and we love it. It's from people relocating or wanting to relocate here. So we are happy to help. This is what we do for a living. We love to help people get oriented and understand life in middle Tennessee. So remember if you're moving in nine days or 90 days, we want to help you connect all the dots so you can make that right move. We are a real estate team dedicated to helping buyers and sellers, and we've helped over a thousand people move in and around the Nashville area. Welcome to part two of our video, Top Franklin Neighborhoods. Be sure to check out video number one so you don't miss out on the most popular Franklin neighborhoods. With that, let's get back into it. Let's get into our next one, and that's going to be Avalon. Well, we're, it takes us back to the interstate. Avalon is is off Cool Springs Boulevard on the east side of 65. And uh, just marvelous gated community. One section of it, as I recall, is not gated. But uh, these uh, million to $8 million properties have great vistas up on the hillside. Yeah. Truly enjoy and benefit from the rolling hills of Middle Tennessee in Avalon. Yeah, you've got the... The, the, I think it's the meat of Avalon where you have this really uh, luxury ridgetop properties. Dave Ramsey's home was there uh, with crazy views of, of Cool Springs, you know, to the west. Um, and so you, you do have a couple different sections. And for Avalon, again, yeah, gated community here, uh, this part, and you're going to find product right around that million dollar mark, mm -hmm. um, plus or minus, and then if you get into the, the luxury section, it gets kind of crazy. There's a five, a eight, you know, $10 million property. So kind of depends on how up the hill you are. E exactly. Okay. That takes us to our next one, Paul, Berry Farms. Berry Farms. Yeah. Well, if you, again, leave uh, Highway 96, exit six, just remember Highway 96 is the east-west accident axis in Franklin. And it's... Yeah. In it's exit 65 on Interstate 65. That's how I always remembered it. So you want to go the, the the next exit to the south, which is either Paytonsville Road or Goose Creek Parkway. You'll find a lot of double names on a lot of Tennessee roads and highways. But uh, Berry Farm, the, the the northwest quadrant of the intersection of I-65 and uh Paytonsville Road is Berry Farms. It's a planned community. Um it, it's not gated, but it's got a great uh urban feel with uh high rise condos, uh retail above and and condos above retail. Yep. Uh, so and it's very uh walkable. It's not the size of West Haven, but it, it used the uses the flavor of West Haven uh for for uh for its its value really. Yeah, here's a this is one we sold right there in Berry Farms. Really neat house. Yep. Again, they they control the architecture, so you have some care and thoughtful design. Yep. To me, it feels kind of like a West Haven, but yep. on I-65. You get the convenience of the interstate that you don't really get in West Haven. Um, of course, you don't have the same amenity package as West Haven with the golf course, you know, the massive clubhouse. 
Berry Farms does have, um, as you get off the interstate here, it has the nicest Sonic. You'll ever <laughs> The nicest uh, Chick-fil-A. It's a white painted brick Chick-fil-A. <laughs> this has all been like really controlled as it gets developed down to the south. They've 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 controlled how this all looks and feels, buddy. So, I mean, it feels good, doesn't it? It does. So when Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday, we go to Sonic, and so we had <laughs> our Sonic burger last Sunday. <laughs> I mean, a, it's a really nice, good. like a brick Sonic, I think, isn't it? Oh, it is one of the best in the in the country. The so I want to call attention, Clay. I'm looking on the map. Yeah. Uh, I wanted just to pass us by. If yeah. We, if we drop down and notice below uh, Paytonsville, I mean, yeah, Paytonsville Road, just south of all those houses, there are two neighborhoods down there, and I just want to call this to our viewers' attention: Stream yeah. Valley and South Brook are there in that southwest quadrant of the of the interchange. Oh, right, right, down here. Yeah, the reason I want to bring those up is because Berry Farms will eventually be, I think, the name of that entire intersection of those four quadrants. It'll just be referred to as Berry Farms, I believe. And uh, it's touted to be the next Cool Springs. In other words, it's mm. south of Cool Springs. Cool Springs is built out. There's not much land left anywhere in Cool Springs for anybody to build any buildings. There's no residential construction being built now. There, some may come uh, later on Carruthers, but down there, that's the future. And uh, uh, I've talked to the developer of Southbrook or the uh, Mike Ford Homes. They only expect a 12 year build out down there <laughs> and they've okay. just started. Wow. So it's happening and it will continue to happen. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, go ahead. Man, you, you're exactly right. I know you, you've you really helped multiple customers in this area and you've kind of seen what all is. It's the it's the frontier, but it's not. It's, it's happening. It's going. It's go time. If you um, need to be in. Yeah, if you if you need to be in downtown Nashville in 30 minutes, you can live in Berry Farms, take two left turns and be there in 30 minutes. So that's, that's right. It's and very, advantage to, to medical workers and uh, and office workers. Absolutely, and walkable to multiple restaurants right there in Berry Farms. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, really, really well done. That takes us to Cool Springs, uh, yeah. the neighborhood. Cool Springs East, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. There, there. Originally, there were three separate neighborhoods: the Woods of Cool Springs, Cool Springs East, and there was one other name that just I failed to find. But today it's just Cool Springs East. And so if you're on Carruthers and you're up uh, due east of, of uh, Cool Springs Mall, then you'll find these houses all nestled in these hills between uh, apartment complexes and then other neighborhoods in Brentwood. So yep. they really they really hug the Brentwood city line, city limits, but they are very scenic and uh, they're all, of course, there's nothing new in there but we helped uh, one of our clients moved in there last year and yep. she just, she loved the access, the, the closeness I mean, to everything. You are yeah. right up on the border of cool. You're on in cool Springs basically, which is why it's called cool Springs East. And you've got a pool in that neighborhood. Yep. Um, you know, prices 700 to low one millions, you yep. know, but you're, but you're, you're right there in the middle of cool Springs, which is pretty convenient. Uh, worth knowing about. All right, that takes us on to Waters Edge. Waters Edge, yeah. So we're going back south to uh, down uh, down Carruthers, which is right right here. Cool Springs East is on Carruthers. So if we right. just go south on Carruthers, past Highway 96, we'll come to Waters Edge down there on the right. The note uh, I wanted to say uh, about all of these houses is that a company in Gallatin uh, by the name of Goodall Homes uh, was uh, a family owned business there. And one year, some time ago, they, be, they were named the national home builder of the year because of, uh, the quality that they were doing, uh, creating. And it was so, uh, significant that it caught the attention of Warren Buffett and he bought the company. Mm. And so Ber Berkshire Hathaway owns this neighborhood. And uh, Water's Edge is just a very special location, uh, very accessible to the interstate. 
and also uh, will be next door to the newest city park being built in Franklin around the lake and the Harpeth River that flows through there. Love it, man. And I'm seeing five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar kind of category. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guess it is there. Yeah, right there by Lad Park. Uh, but another lots of new construction product in in Water's Edge. Many of these are uh, alley entrance garages. Yeah. And um, there's a variety, but a significant number of these are alley entrance. All right, let's talk about Sullivan Farms. Sullivan Farms. Uh, the story I love about Sullivan Farms is it was built after Fieldstone, and they learned Fieldstone has white fencing all around the 1500 homes. And they realized it's hard to keep white fences what? looking good. Man, so when so Sullivan hard. Farms, the developer said, let's put black fences in. <laughs> so Hilarious. you can use Chris Oat or black stuff to keep those fences in much better shape, longer period of time. But I have a personal note about it too. A personal friend of mine from out of state was the landscape architect for Sullivan Farms. Oh, they, wow. they, took, they took a dairy farm and the developers that hired him and his company took a dairy farm and then uh, they created a special smaller neighborhoods within this larger neighborhood of Sullivan Farms, which was a family owned dairy. One of the last dairies that was in operation in this county. But yeah, yeah very yeah. popular because you got two ways in and out. You can go, get on Lewisburg Pike to go north or south, or you can go around to Mac Hatcher and you have a lighted interchange there to get back to wherever you yep. want to go. And you're kind of in that 500 to a million rough category yep. there for Sullivan yep. Farms. Yep. All right. And kind of similar, I feel like Franklin Green. Maybe a little it is. Yeah. Franklin Green is uh, back uh, on the uh, west side of Franklin. And this, uh, its name is very significant because they won all kinds of landscaping awards when they designed this subdivision. Because every house, almost every house backs up to common space. And so many people ask us, you know, hey, I don't want anybody behind me. And th that's the way this neighborhood was developed. It's pretty tight. The houses are in there pretty tight, but they've got a pool and, uh, you know, it's a uh, nice uh, common area for the for the guests. So you're uh, kind of the right place. there by by West Haven. You just it east is. of West Haven. Yep. And then you're also near that Williamson County soccer complex, which is Don't maybe forget the, that. Largest, the largest soccer complex you'll see in North America, maybe. There's just field after field yep. uh, for soccer. Franklin led the way in soccer. I'm told that in the 70s, they hired a Norwegian soccer coach. I'm not sure what his name was, but he came here and it really helped get the sport launched in the late seventies here. Well, certainly popular. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about Forest Crossing. What I like about Forest Crossing is that it's close to the interstate. It's about 750 homes and it has all the amenities. Uh, it has golf, which we haven't talked about. Golf courses are limited in this area. And so to be living in a neighborhood where you could literally walk to the golf course or take your cart down to the golf course is pretty special. And uh, it's, a, I guess, private public course. It's easy to go in and get a tea time. Uh, it's under new ownership and it's very, uh, I think it's called the bridge. You know, yeah. Jerry's involved with that. And so, yeah, my, my brother's involved with that. And his friend is, is the guy who took over the ownership. Great guy, really neat little locals kind of golf course. Uh, Try to find a parking place during the week. I mean, it's it's full all the time. Oh, People think it's, it's a long course, 8,000 feet and right along the banks of the Harpeth River. So it's very picturesque. That's exactly right. And there's actually um, there's actually a rope swing somewhere oh, along man. that golf course on the river. I've seen it when oh, I was playing golf there once. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, hey, buddy. Uh, but yeah, Forest Crossing, you know, worth knowing about. Not a new neighborhood, mm -hmm. but pretty so darn convenient. convenient. So convenient. And, uh, you know, relatively affordable. Talking like sub 900s, you know, five, six, yeah. sevens. Um, and also, fun fact, some of it is called Riverview, correct? Yeah, Riverview was an older uh, single family neighborhood that that abuts the interstate. So it's kind of like the buffer yeah. between the interstate and Forest Crossing and they flow into each other. Correct. That's exactly right. And you got really good I-65 access to um, the Forest Crossing and Riverview. Yes. All right. That takes us into if you made it this far, you're going to get our bonus neighborhoods. 
that we think not everybody talks a lot about um, or may not know about. The number one for me is Karen Bridge. Yes. What do you like about Karen Bridge, Clay? Man, I like that it uh, is a Southern land community. Yes. And it just the, it just feels good in there, you know. Uh, and I love that it's super convenient. You're right in the kind of in the heart of Cool Springs, mm. also. So you get a nice neighborhood, really easy interstate access off Cool Springs Boulevard. Um, yep. Some of it, let's see, I believe some of it is gated and some of it's not. It, it does That's cross. Right. Well, the enclave across the street's gated, but Karen Bridge is not gated. That's exactly right. And so, but they just, you know, the house is just, um, they control the design and it's, you know, they're all brick and it's just yeah. really tastefully done. You'll probably, there's a 1.4, 1, 1.2, 1, 1.3, 1.4 kind of category. So to me, it's like your Laurel Brook, your Winstone, your West Haven, except you're right there, bam, in Cool Springs, good, convenient spot. And it's got clubhouse. I believe they have a pool clubhouse. Yep. Um, just tastefully done, heavily landscaped. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Hey, let me throw this in for free, Clay. Uh, when you're when you're studying Coos Springs area, Karen Bridge is right across the street from a sister development called the Enclave, which yep. uh, the Southern Land Builders built. They, they, this Karen Bridge was their first neighborhood that they first started building residential houses in in Middle Tennessee. So they got their start there. And it would later lead, as we've mentioned, to Laurel Brook, to West Haven. Now McEwen North is their product. Uh, but what I wanted to say was the people that bought the land east of 65 on Carruthers were Atlanta developers. And they master planned everything from Highway 96 all the way north to Moores Lane. And so when you're traveling Carruthers, it's not a straight shot. It curves, it uh, undulates. I mean, it's got landscaping. Uh, out of the out of its uh, out of the world, and I'll never will forget showing in on uh, showing in uh, the enclave once, and and a, a prospect had her sister from California in the car with me. This has been years ago. We turned right out of the enclave, facing Karen Bridge. She turned; she could see the mall across the interstate. And she said, "This feels so much like California." <laughs> so it was right wow. there. Yeah. So. Not yeah. in California, wasn't sure what that feel was, but I sure did know what it felt like in yeah. Karen Bridge. <laughs> I love that. So, you know, developed, yeah, right around that 2000 mark. So some of those houses are going to need some updating depending on your taste. But man, great convenient location and just uh, a good solid product. Well, All right, that takes to our ahead. other bonus neighborhood, Paul. Talk to me about St. Marlowe. Surprise, surprise. This is, uh, I think I mentioned I've been here 35 years and Tucker and I were out last week and all of a sudden we turned the corner and we said, what is St. Marlowe? So this is right off a long lane. And uh, I noticed they only have 37 houses that are sold and under contract that start in the upper 900s. Most of these look like they're around a million one, but it's totally brand new uh, neighborhood started last year and it just extremely popular and everything is just flying off the flying up you know just flying off the charts and what i would like to say is uh, the reason i think this is happening obviously they've got a fine product in there but williamson county is slated to grow 250,000 people in the next 18 years wow and the good news is williamson county has the land to accommodate that kind of growth and this neighborhood is one example. It's out just a little bit. You feel like you're in the middle of the of the country and you're only about four miles from Publix, you know. That's right. And, and you can get a 5,000 foot house for, you know, lower, call it lower to mid one millions, brand new um, and good looking houses. All right, Paul, uh, any summary thoughts as we wrap up the video top neighborhoods of Franklin? Well, you know, Clay, we, we were talking about the growth in the county and I just subscribed to the Williamson County Schools uh, newsletter. So if you go in and enter your email address, you can keep up with the schools. I find if you keep up with the schools, you can keep up with the growth of the county because they've got only two new elementary schools that are going to open in August this year. 
and they need names. So they're soliciting people to name the elementary schools. One of many schools that will be opening over the next decade. Man, that's great. Well, certainly tons of neighborhoods to choose from in Franklin. We haven't even touched on all of them. This is just a start. So check out our other videos to, to keep learning about the area. And if you want to do a deep dive in any of these neighborhoods, please let us know. You know, if you're moving in nine days or 90 days, we want to help you connect all the dots to make that right move. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you got any value, please. And we hope to show you around town soon.